Oh, praise to the most high. So, tonight's topic, uh, my favorite topic of all times, we're going to be going over marriage this day. Okay? The topic that will never grow old in Israel. So, tonight's topic is called, um, They Shall Be One Flesh. They two shall be one flesh. They two shall be one flesh. That's tonight's topic. So pay close attention. Pay close attention. All right. Let's open up with the book of Hebrews. Hebrews chapter 13 verse 4. Let's start there. Hebrews chapter 13 and verse 4. Hebrews chapter 13 verse 4. Marriage is honorable in all, and the bed undefiled. But whoremongers and adulterers, God will judge. Read that again. I need you to so put some power in this thing. Read that again. Hebrews 13 verse 4. Mm -hmm. Marriage is honorable in all, and the bed undefiled. But whoremongers and adulterers, God will judge. So now this is a commandment right here. The Lord is teaching as he's speaking through the apostle Paul. He says marriage is honorable. Okay, marriage is honorable. He didn't say boyfriend is honorable. He didn't say girlfriend is honorable. Marriage is an honorable thing in the sight of the Most High. As a nation, we have not been taught that. As a nation, if you, if you watch TV, if you watch the news, YouTube, Instagram, whatever, when you look at the condition of the black man and the black woman, what do you see? You see, um, you see shows like uh, Meet My Family. You know that show, Meet My Family? That, that has nothing to do with marriage, by the way. That is just us as a nation prostituting, the sisters prostituting themselves, and what? And fathers and parents prostituting their own children, promoting boyfriends and girlfriends. You understand? But the Lord, what did the Bible say? Verse 4 again. Hebrews 13 verse 4. Read. Marriage is honorable, no. Come on. And the bed undefiled. Mm -hmm. But whoremongers and adulterers, God will judge. So now, marriage is honorable. So the subject matters about marriage. You understand? Marriage is honorable and the bed is undefiled. So when you are married and you are dealing with your wife, you are dealing with your husband, your bed is undefiled. But the minute you have sex outside of marriage, your bed is defiled. The Lord is, does not honor that. That's why people today, there's diseases, such STDs. You understand? Why? Because they are not, they are not dealing with one another under the covenant of marriage. But they are dealing with one another under the, the lust of boyfriend and girlfriend. You understand? That's where disease is coming. You understand? Watch this. Give me the book. Give me the book of Genesis chapter 2 verse 21. Let's deal with the first marriage that was instituted from the beginning. Okay? Genesis 2 21. Genesis chapter 2 verse 21. It says marriage is honorable. So we have to go back to the beginning because marriage is a strong foundation for what? For a strong nation. Marriage is a foundation for a strong nation. The reason why you see us as a nation, the so-called blacks, Bantus, Negroes, Hispanics, Native American Indians, we've got, um, we hate one another. We don't know how to deal with one another. You understand? There's always chaos and confusion in the black, quote-unquote, black family. The nation of Israel is because there's no strong marriages. Why? Because there's no marriages in Israel. It's only boyfriends and girlfriends, baby mamas and baby daddies. And because of that, that's why as a nation we are weak right now. You understand? Read that. Genesis 2, 21. The book of Genesis chapter 2, verse 21. Go ahead. And the Lord God caused a deep sleep to fall upon Adam, and he slept. Mm -hmm. And he took one of his ribs and closed up the flesh instead thereof. So now, Adam... Aram was, the Lord created Aram in Genesis 2 verse 7. Read Genesis 2 verse 7. Genesis chapter 2 verse 7. Read. And the Lord God formed man of the dust of the ground mm -hmm. and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life and man became a living soul. So Aram was given the commandments. The Lord created Aram and Aram was given the commandments. You understand? Now, after Aram was given the commandments, now Aram, Aram was also given a job. Read verse 16. Verse 16. You know what? I'm gonna wait. I'm gonna touch, I'm gonna deal with that later. Let me not jump ahead. Jump down to verse 21 again. Read verse 21. I just want to show you at this point, Eve wasn't created yet. You understand? 
But Aram was there already, was given the commandments, responsibility. Okay, verse 21 now, watch this. Genesis chapter 2, verse 21. Read. And the Lord God caused a deep sleep to fall upon Adam, and he slept. And he took one of his ribs and closed up the flesh instead thereof. So now Adam, Eve is going to be created out of Adam. Okay, go ahead. And the rib which the Lord God had taken from man made he a woman and brought her unto the man. Now Eve is created now out of Adam's rib. Literally, she was taken out of Adam's rib. You understand? And when she, when the Lord formed her, the Lord formed her, he took Eve and brought her to Adam. Why? Because that's the order. You understand? That is the order. Eve didn't say, I'm an independent woman here. You don't read that. After she was created, she was brought to Adam and she was created out of Adam. You understand? Read. And Adam said, this is now bone of my bones and flesh of my flesh. Read. She shall be called woman because mm -hmm. she was taken out of man. Because she was taken out of man. You see that thing? Does the word woman mean out of man or taken out of man? The word woman means she was taken out of a man. So guess what? We don't come from the woman. We come from one. The, the women, they come from us. You understand? From the very first beginning, Adam was created first, then Eve was formed out of Adam. You understand? So now, watch this. Now at this point, the Lord is what? The Lord is, is formulating marriage. You understand? Because we have, to return, we have to go back to our culture and our heritage. And our culture and our heritage in terms of building the nation, the foundation of nation building is marriage. Okay? The foundation for nation building is marriage. And that's what the Lord is doing with us here from the time of Adam and Eve, our four parents. Okay? Read. Therefore shall a man leave his father and his mother and shall cleave unto his wife and they shall be one flesh. He says, shall leave father and mother and guess what? Read that again, verse 24. Genesis chapter 2, verse 24. Come on. Therefore shall a man leave his father and his mother and shall cleave unto his wife and, mm -hmm. they, and they shall be one flesh. And they shall be one flesh. One flesh shall a man leave father and mother and cleave and shall cleave unto his wife, and they shall be one flesh. But watch this. What I want to show you is that go back to uh, go back to verse 23, Genesis 2 23 again. Genesis 2 verse 23. And Adam said, This is now bone of my bones and flesh of my flesh. She shall be called woman. Because she was taken out of man. Because she was taken out of man. Now give me 1 Corinthians chapter 11. 1 Corinthians chapter 11 and verse 8. 1 Corinthians chapter 11 verse 8. Because Eve was created out of Adam. Okay. This, the women, they come from us. Not the other way around. Okay. From the very beginning, that's how it was. You understand? 1 Corinthians chapter 11 and verse 8. You know what's that of a seven? First Corinthians, First chapter Corinthians 11, chapter verse 11. seven. Come on. First Corinthians chapter 11, verse 7. Mm -hmm. For man indeed ought not to cover his head, for as much as he is the image and glory of God, but the woman is the glory of the man. So um, the man, we are, we are made in the image and the glory of the Most High God. The woman is not made in the image and glory of God. She's made in the image and glory of the man. You understand? Read that again, verse 7. 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 7. For a man oh. indeed ought not to cover his head, mm. for as much as he is the image and glory of God, but the woman is the glory of the man. But the woman is the glory of the man. Go ahead. For the man is not of the woman, but the woman of the man. That's what we just read in Genesis 2, verse 23. For the man is not of the woman, but the woman of the man. The Apostle Paul is repeating the same thing that Moses wrote in Genesis, the second chapter. Read on. 
Neither was neither was the man created for the woman, but the woman for the man. He says, neither was the man created for the woman. So guess what? We was not created to serve the woman. They, are, they were created to serve us. Our job, we was created to serve Christ. Christ was created to serve the Mosai. That's the order. Okay? Now watch this. Give me the book of Ecclesiasticus. No, you know what? He says, they shall become one flesh. Now let's go back to Genesis 2 verse 24. Genesis 2 24 again. Genesis chapter 2 verse 24. Come on. Therefore shall a man leave his father and his mother and shall cleave unto his wife and they shall be one flesh. And they shall be one flesh. Now watch this. What I want to deal with first and foremost is, he says, then shall a man leave father, his father and his mother and shall join to his wife. Let's deal with that. When he says a man shall leave his father and his mother. So when you leave your father and your mother as a man now, we're dealing with men. Now I'm talking to you men now. When you leave your father and your mother, that means there's something. The Lord, he, the, you see, the most I didn't make it plain. When he says leave your father and your mother, he didn't make it plain. Now watch this. I'm going to fill in the gaps for you. Give me the book of 2 Thessalonians chapter 3 verse 10. When you leave your father and your mother, that means you have a what? The first thing you must have, you must have a what? You must have a job. Okay? You must work. Watch this. Give me that in 2 Thessalonians 3 verse 10. 2 Thessalonians chapter 3 verse 10. Come on. For even when we were with you, this we commanded you, that if any would not work, neither should he eat. If any would not work, he's talking about the men now. If any would not work, neither should he eat. Okay, that's a commandment. Because why? Because the Apostle Paul, there were some brothers in the congregation that did not want to work. So guess what? They were working disorderly. Next verse. Go ahead. For we hear that there are some which walk among you disorderly, working not at all, but are busybodies. You see what he's saying? He says there are some in the congregation that they are walking disorderly. What is the disorder? They don't want to work. Okay? They don't want to get a job. You understand? He says, working not at all, but are busy bodies in other people's business. Read. Now them that are such, we command and exhort by our Lord Jesus Christ that with quietness they work and eat their own bread. You see what he's saying? He says, now he says, we command and exhort by our Lord Jesus Christ. So this is the commandment that Christ gave, that men must have a job. Because guess what? Christ also, he was, he, he, had a, he, had a, he had a place to stay. You understand? How do you think he did that? Now watch this. It says, read that part again. Second Thessalonians 3 verse 12. Now them that are such, we command and exhort by our Lord Jesus Christ. That with quietness they work and eat their own bread. And eat their own bread. Why? Because they have a job. They are working now. You understand? So when he says a man shall leave his father and his mother, that means one of the things that he has is a job. He's got a job. He's working. He's able to maintain himself. He's able to, to take care of himself. Because before he can take care of a wife, he needs to be able to know how to what? To take care of himself and maintain himself. For that to happen, he needs to have a job. You understand? That's what it says, leave your father and your mother. Because when you leave your father and your mother, you, you're not going to stay on the streets. You need to be able to eat. You need to be able to, to, uh, to, to have clothes and so forth. You understand? Food on the table, roof over your head. You need a job to do that. Okay, that's why it says, leave your father and your mother. All right? Now watch this. Um, keep going. Read on. Verse 13. Verse 13. But ye brethren, be not weary in well-doing. He says, don't be weary in well-doing. What does that mean? He's talking about the fact that you must have a job. When you don't have a job, you are weary in well-doing. Read. And if any man obey not our word by this epistle, note that man and have no company with him, that he may be ashamed. You see what the law, you see what was the commandment? that he gave to the church in Thessalonica. He said, listen, make sure that in all the churches, including the church of Thessalonica, 
there must not be a man that does not want to have a job, that does not want to work. You understand? It says, and have no company with him that he may be ashamed. Meaning, don't, do not interact with the brother until he gets himself correct so that he may be ashamed. You understand? Read. Really? Yet count him not as an enemy, but admonish him as a brother. He says, don't count him as an enemy. He's not your enemy. You understand? But he says, you must correct him as a brother because that's the law. Leviticus 19 verse 17. We're coming back here. Leviticus chapter 19 verse 17. He says, but we must, count him, we must count him as a brother. We know count him. He said, don't count him as an enemy, but admonish him as a brother. Read that. The book of Leviticus, chapter 19, verse 17. Read. Thou shalt not hate thy brother in thine heart. Come on. Thou shalt in any wise rebuke thy neighbor and not suffer sin upon him. You see what he's saying? He says, you must in any wise rebuke your neighbor. But you must, up, he says, you must absolutely correct your brother. Because the problem is that because in the Christian church, they don't teach our people the law. What, they don't show them what they are doing wrong. When we bring the scriptures to correct our people, our people says, don't judge me. No, no, no. Do not confuse judgment with correction. The Lord is the one that will bring judgment. But we correct you so that you don't have to suffer the judgment that God will bring. You understand? So you cannot say, no, only God can judge me. That's too Tupac. That is not the scriptures. You understand? That's Thug Life. Okay, disc one. That is Thug Life, disc one. I hope you understand that. Okay? Go back to where it was at now. Second Thessalonians 3. Okay, verse 15. Second Thessalonians chapter 3, verse 15. Read. Yet count him not as an enemy, mm -hmm. but admonish him as a brother. Because that's the law. So one of the things that he will have is the job. That's why it says, a man, go back to that scripture again. Okay? Genesis 2, verse 24 again. So we understand Genesis. this scripture fully, what it's saying. Read. The book of Genesis, chapter 2, verse 24. Read. Therefore shall a man leave his father and his mother, and shall cleave unto his wife. Come on. And they shall be one flesh. And they shall be one flesh. He shall leave his father and his mother, and they shall be one flesh. So before we get to they shall be one flesh, we're going to deal with that part which says leave his father and his mother. Watch this. Give me that in 1 Timothy 5 verse 8. 1 Timothy chapter 5 and verse 8. We're still dealing with that brother that he leaves his father and his mother. So what my, in order for him to leave his father and his mother, what, do, what does he have to have? He must have a job. He must have a place to stay. You understand? Before he can have a place to stay, he needs to have a job so he can be able to maintain or get himself a place to stay. Okay? Read that. First uh, Timothy chapter 5 verse 8. First Timothy chapter 5 verse 8. Read. But if any provide not for his own, mm -hmm. and especially for those of his own house, he hath denied the faith, and is worse than an infidel. You see what the scriptures is saying? He says, but if any provide not for his own, meaning for his own nation, if you don't provide for your nation, and he says, and especially for those of his own house, now it goes to your family, your wife, your children. You understand? He says he had denied the faith and is worse than an infidel, meaning you are worse than a non-believer. That's what he's saying right there. Okay, I'll give an example. Give me Genesis chapter 30, verse 30. Okay, this is an example of our forefather Jacob. When he was working for Laban and it was time for him because now he had gotten Leah and Rachel, it was time for him to go. This is what he said now. Watch this. Genesis 30 verse 30. The book of Genesis chapter 30 verse 30. Read. For it was little which thou had hadest before I came. Mm -hmm. And it is now increased unto a multitude. And the Lord hath blessed thee since my coming. And now when shall I provide for my own house also? You see what he's saying? When shall I provide for my own house also? That's some heavy stuff right there. He says, when shall I provide for my own house? That's the same thing we just read. It says, if any, he says, if, but if any provide not for his own, and especially for those of his own house, that's what we read in 1 Timothy 5 verse 8. Jacob is saying the same thing here. Okay, let's go back. 1 Timothy 5 verse 8 again. First Timothy chapter 5 verse 8. 
But if any provide not for his own, and especially for those of his own house, he hath denied the faith and is worse than an infidel. He had denied the faith and is worse than an infidel. Now watch this. The second thing is he must have a place to stay. You understand? Give me the book of Ecclesiasticus in the Apocrypha. Okay, because we have a sister online. Um, I hope the sister, uh, she managed to download the Apocrypha, the Bible app, because we use the Apocrypha books as well. So give me that in uh, Ecclesiasticus chapter 29, verse 21. Ecclesiasticus 29, verse 21. Read that. Ecclesiasticus chapter 29, verse 21. Read. The chief thing for life is water. The chief thing, the most important things for life is water. Go ahead. And bread mm -hmm. and clothing. Go ahead. And in house to cover shame. And in house to cover shame. So the chief things for life is water, bread clothing and in a house to cover shame so these are the basic things that a man needs the basic things that a woman needs but we're dealing with the man now him getting a job him getting a place to stay these are the the main things that he has to have when he leaves his father and his mother and when he cleaves to his wife okay read that again verse 21 ecclesiastes 29 verse 21 read the chief thing for life is water Mm -hmm. and bread and clothing and a house to cover shame because these things goes into the necessity water goes into thirst okay bread goes into hunger clothing you understand goes into nakedness you understand how you cover your nakedness and a house to cover shame a roof over your head you understand watch this give me the book of Sirach chapter 39 now Ecclesiasticus chapter 39 verse 26 so in order for a man to have these things, he must have a what? He must have a job. Okay, so read that. Ecclesiastes 39 verse 26. Read that. Ecclesiastes 39 verse 26. Read. The principal things for the whole use of man's life are water, Read. fire, iron and salt, flour of wheat, honey, milk, and the blood of the grape, and oil and clothing. So these are, the, these are the basic things. The principal things is as water, fire, you understand, to cook, iron, okay, and salt, flour of the wheat, honey, milk, you see, and the blood of the grapes, that's wine, and oil and clothing. Read verse 27. All these things are for good to the godly, so that so to the sinners they are turned into evil. To the sinners, they are turned into evil. Why? Because they don't know, they misuse the stuff that they've got. That's what he's saying. That's why today you see a lot of our people, they, they confuse. You ever see when our people, when they go to, to the shops, like now it's month end, right? They go and buy groceries. They don't buy, they, 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 when you look at the trolleys, you see the things that our people buy. They be buying things and like, but that's not groceries. That's, those, are not, those are not basic things in life. They, 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 don't, they don't buy the staples. You understand? So, and that's why it says to the godly, it says, and all these things are good to the godly, meaning what? Those that keep the commandments and to the sinners, they are turned into evil. That's why our people today, they are sick because they eat, they eat the, the poloni, they eat pork. You understand? They don't know how to eat or what to eat. When you look at um, KFC, it's packed. They deep fry stuff. You understand? That's our people. They've got um, high rates of what? High rates of blood pressure, high blood pressure. You understand? Uh, cancer, heart disease. You understand? Things of that nature. Why? Because of the stuff that we eat. We don't eating lawful things, lawful food, according to the scriptures. You cannot be eating McDonald's all the time. You are, you are eating deep fry stuff. You don't, but there's no veg in your, in your diet. There's no morojo. There's no cabbage. There's no carrot. There's no beetroot. You understand? Things of that nature. These things, fella, they are medication for us. You understand? Watch this. Give me that in Sirach 38. Okay. Sirach chapter 38, verse 4. Watch this. Because the food that we eat is medicine that the Mosaic God has given unto us. 
So you cannot be eating meat all the time. And when you get gout, you are surprised. Okay, read that. Ecclesiastes 38 verse 4. The Lord has created medicines out of the earth. Read. And he that is wise will not abhor them. He that is wise will eat, will eat the medicines that the Lord has created out of the earth. What are those medicines? The herbs. You understand? Bumurojo, bukerichi, and so forth. Those are the herbs. Have a fruit, okay? Have a fruit. Stop buying, stop going to Krispy Kreme. Don't be going there. Buy a fruit. Buy a banana. Okay? Buy some nuts. You go to the street, the street vendors, Abu Kakoka, see, there's always street vendors selling beans, they're selling nuts, they're selling bananas and oranges, the some are selling strawberries and so forth. Listen, and the fruits and veggies, they are cheap. Okay? So I just wanted to touch that because this is medication. It's medicine for us. Read again. She's yes, chapter 38, verse 4. Read. The Lord has created medicine out of the earth, and he that is wise will not abhor them. He that is wise will not abhor them. The, the thing is, our people, they don't have the wisdom of the scriptures. They don't have the wisdom of the Most High. That's why they don't know. He that is wise will not abhor them. But our people, you hear them, them, them speak, their conversation, they be saying, I mean, I have my veggies. I know, man. That's not wisdom. Okay? Give me that in Psalms 19 verse 7. Watch this. Psalms 19 verse This is what makes us wise. The reason why our people, they say stuff like that is because they lack this and because it's not being taught in the Christian church. Okay, I'm still on topic. Psalms 19 verse 7. Read that. Psalms chapter 19 verse 7. Come on. The law of the Lord is perfect. Mm, converting the, the soul. The law of the Lord is perfect. Converting okay. the soul. So, your network is bad. It says, the law of the Lord is perfect, converting the soul. So, the law is the subject here. The laws of God. You understand? The laws of the Most High. Read. The testimony of the Lord is sure, mm -hmm. making wise the simple. You see that thing? Making wise the simple. So, the laws of God is going to make you wise. The reason now our people, they reject the medicines that are created out of the earth is because they don't have the laws of God. The laws of God were like the dietary laws. What to eat, what not to eat. You read about that in the book of Leviticus, the 11th chapter. That's the dietary laws. You understand? So now, because our people don't know the law, they don't even know the law regarding what to eat and how to eat, guess what? That's why they abhor the medicines that the Lord, that the Lord has created out of the earth. Give me that in 2 Ezra 9 verse 26. In the Apocrypha, 2 Ezra, chapter 9, verse 26. 2 Ezra, chapter 9, verse 26. Read. So I went my way into the field, which is called Adath. Adath. Like, Read. Which is called Adath, like as he commanded me. Read. And there I sat among the flowers mm -hmm. and did eat of the herbs of the field. And, of, and the meat of the same satisfied me. Go ahead. After seven days, I sat upon the grass, and my heart was vexed within me, like as before. So now Ezra was told, listen, go and eat the veggies, the fruits and the veggies of the field, because that's medicine. You understand? To cleanse yourself, so that your immune system can perform better, your, your health can perform better, your metabolism can perform better. You understand? So your blood can be clean and so forth. How do you do that? You eat, like for instance, beetroot. Beetroot helps to clean your, your, your white blood cells. You understand? It helps with your red blood cells and your white blood cells. So beetroot is good. Okay? So you those things are supposed to what? They're supposed to satisfy you because that's what the body needs. I'm not saying the body doesn't need meat. That meaning flesh. It does, but you must Together with that, you must have fruits and veggies as well to go with that. Okay? So, let's go back to Sirach chapter 39. I just wanted to touch on that. Ecclesiastes 39 verse 27 again. 
Ecclesiastes chapter 9, verse 27. Read. All these things are for good to the godly. Mm -hmm. So to the sinner, so to the sinners, they are turned into evil. You see, to the sinners, they are turned into evil because our people, they don't want to repent. When you teach them the laws, they say, don't judge me. But they just, they, 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 be, they be correcting their children when they go off. But when we come now, the, the prophets with the scriptures, they say, don't judge me. That's why now it says, to the sinners, they are turned into evil. Something that's supposed to be good, now it has turned evil against you. You understand? That's what the Lord is saying. But the key here is that, go back to Genesis 2 verse 24 again, in case we, for, we forgot. Because I know some of you forgot already. Genesis 2 24, read that. Genesis chapter 2 verse 24. Mm -hmm. Therefore shall a man leave his father and his mother, and shall cleave unto his wife, and they shall be one flesh. And they shall be one flesh. So when he leaves his father and his mother, he gets a job. Now he needs to be able to get a place, a place to stay. Okay, watch this. Mm, give me, go back to Sirach now, 29. Verse 21. Ecclesiastes 29, verse 21. Ecclesiastes chapter 29, verse 21. The chief thing for life is water and bread and clothing and in house to cover shame. And in house to cover shame. It says water, bread, and clothing and in house to cover shame. You understand? These things are good to the godly. Okay, that's what we read in Sirach 39. They are good to the godly. Read verse, read verse 21 again. Ecclesiastes chapter 29, verse 21. Read. The chief thing for life is water mm -hmm. and bread and clothing and in house to cover shame. And in house to cover shame. So let's deal with the house to cover shame. That's the roof over your head. Watch this. Give me 1 Peter 2.21. 1 Peter 2.21. We are following after the, after the footsteps of our Lord and Savior Jesus the Christ, the black Messiah that died for us. 1 Peter Chapter 2, verse 21. Watch this. First Peter, chapter 2, verse 21. Come on. For even here and too were ye called, because Christ also suffered for us, leaving us an example, that ye should follow his steps. Okay, I need you to read like there's, like there's life in you. Come on. Put some life in this thing. Verse 21 again. First Peter, chapter 2, verse 21. Read. For even here unto we call, because Christ also suffered for us, leaving us an example that ye should follow his steps. You see that thing? It says that we, he, Christ left us an example that we should follow his footsteps. You understand? Let's see the, the example that Christ left behind. Give me that in John chapter 1 verse 38. John 1 verse 38. Because it says, and in house to cover shame. Watch this. The book of John, chapter 1, verse 38. Mm -hmm. Then Jesus turned and saw them following, and saith unto them, What seek ye? They said unto him, Rabbi, which is to say, being interpreted, Master, where dwellest thou? So now the followers of Christ, those that followed Christ, they are asking him, Rabbi, where dwellest thou? Where do you stay? You understand? They are questioning is the roof over his head. Where do you stay? Christ, read, watch this. He said unto them, come and see. He, say, he said they unto came. them, come, hold on. He says, he says what? He says, come and see. Meaning, come and see where I stay. Meaning, Christ had a, had a roof over his head. He had a house to cover shame. You understand? Read. They came and saw where he dwelt and abode, his, and abode with him that day. For it was about the tenth hour. You see that thing? It says, they came and saw where he dwelt and abode with him that day, for it was about the tenth hour. So they came to where Christ stayed. He had a place, he had a roof over his head. You understand? So because in the Christian church, you don't hear about that. You know what they will tell you? You know, it's funny. It's funny how the pastors, they be pushing, um, you know, people must give tithes and all of that. They live in mansions, but Christ didn't have a place to stay. That makes sense? That makes no sense whatsoever. Okay? Read verse 39 again. The book of John, chapter 1, verse 39. Mm -hmm. He said unto them, Come and see. 
they came and saw where he dwelt and abode with him that day, for it was about the 10th hour. You see that thing, for it was about the 10th hour, but they saw where Christ dwelt. So now go back to Genesis now. Go back to Genesis chapter 2, verse 24 again. So we understand that you must have a job. When he says you must leave his father and his mother, you must have a job. You must have a place to stay, to maintain yourself. Okay? Genesis 2, 24. The book of Genesis chapter 2, verse 24. Mm-hmm. Therefore shall a man leave his father and his mother and shall cleave unto his wife, and they shall be one flesh. And they shall be one flesh. Now give me Matthew chapter 19. Because the same thing that we just read now in Genesis 2, Christ said the same thing. Matthew chapter 19 verse 4. Let's start there. What I want you to see is that um, as a nation, these are, the, these are the basic things that we are struggling to do as a nation. And that's why there's so, so much disconnect in the nation of Israel between the black man and the black woman. We cannot relate one to another, okay? Because this is the missing ingredient, which is the laws of God. Read that, Matthew 19, verse four. The book of Matthew, chapter 19, verse four. And he answered and said unto them, have you not read that he which made them at the beginning made them male and female? He says, he which made them at the beginning So what is Christ quoting? He's quoting Genesis 2, what we just read. Genesis 2, 21 down to verse 24. That's what he's quoting. Read. And said, for this cause shall a man leave father and mother and shall cleave to his wife and they they twain shall be one flesh. And they twain shall be one flesh. Twain means two. They two shall be one flesh. So the father, the man will leave his father and his mother. He'll get himself a job. And not only that, he will, he will have a roof over his head. You understand? These are the basic things. These are the requirements. This is what the Lord requires of us. You understand? As men, we must be able to have these things. Before you can even think of a woman, before you can even think of marriage, this is what you must have, you understand, as a man. Because today what you see is, you see brothers, you know, they're still living in, under their mother's house. They are, they, are, they are living in their mother's house. They have a back room. The, the guy is working. He even has a car. You see that thing? And a lot of the times you, so you find that these brothers, they are raised by their mothers. You understand? So they don't have that spirit of a man. They're still, they are still moving like a boy. They have a boy mindset. They have a boy mentality. He is working. You understand? He's living with his mother. He even buys a car. He extends the house so he can, he builds a garage to put that car in. That's what we see in the Lokshins. That is what we see. Why? Because this is not taught to the black man. You understand? This is not taught to the black man. Now guess what happens? Here's what happens next. Now she, he meets a, a, a woman and the woman will be, will they, he'll be sleeping with this woman in the back room of his mother's house. That's what happens, okay? That is what happens on a day-to-day basis. So that is out of order according to the scriptures. That is out of order according to the Mosai. You cannot be bringing your your girlfriend, you understand, to be at the back room. And the mothers also, they are out of order, these these are our mothers. Because their job, they're supposed to say, wait a minute, hey, where's your parents? Where's your mother? Where's your father? Do they know that you are here? Pella, when you are not married, why are you here? They don't say that. They don't say nothing. You understand? The parents also of the, the girl, they don't say nothing. No, but guess what? Nobody's discussing marriage. And that's why we are so dysfunctional as a nation. Okay? Read that again. Verse 5. The book of Matthew, the book of Matthew chapter 19, verse 5. And Read. it said... For this cause shall a man leave father and mother and shall cleave to his wife and they Mm. twain shall be one flesh. And they twain shall be one flesh. So Christ is saying the same thing to us here. You understand? You leave your father and your mother, you must have a job. Okay? You must have a job. Because how was Christ able to take care of himself? Because he was a grown man at this point. So he didn't have a job. How How did he now... How, was he, how did he manage to have a place to stay? 
Because you got to think about it. So did Christ have a job? Hold on. Give me Matthew chapter 13 real quick. Matthew 13 verse 55. Watch this. The book of Matthew chapter 13 verses, six, verses 55. Go ahead. Is not this the carpenter's son? Is not this the carpenter's son? They are talking about Christ. Christ is the carpenter's son. Because Joseph was the carpenter. Okay, go ahead. Is not his mother called Mary? Mm -hmm. And his brethren, James and Joseph and Simon and Judas? And, read that and again. his sisters? Hold on, read. Read, the, read that again for me. Read again. The book of Matthew, chapter 13, verse 55. Is not this the carpenter's son? Is not his mother called Mary? And his brethren, James and Joseph and Simon and Judas? Read. And his sisters, are they not all with us? Whence then had this man all these things? Okay, hold this. Hold on, hold on. Something I'm looking for. One, one second. I do want that verse. We're still going to read it. Oh, yes. Give me the book of Zechariah, chapter 1. I know I was forgetting something. You know what? Matthew 13, verse 55 again. Read that again. Matthew 13, verse 55. The book of Matthew, chapter 13, verse 55. Yeah. Is not this the carpenter's son? Read. Is not his mother called Mary and his brethren, James and Joseph and Simon and Judas? So now, what you want to notice is that Joseph was a carpenter, which was Christ's father. You understand? Joseph was Christ's father. Not his stepfather. No, his father. Okay, he was a carpenter. Watch this. Give me the book of Zechariah, chapter 1. Zechariah, chapter 1, verse 20. The book of Zechariah, chapter 1, verse 20. Read. And the Lord showed me four carpenters. And the Lord showed me four carpenters. Start of verse 19. The book of Zechariah, chapter 1, verse 19. And I said unto the angel that talked with me, What be these? And he answered me, These are the horns which have scattered Judah, Israel, and Jerusalem. These are the horns which scattered Judah, um, Israel, and Jerusalem. That's talk about what? It's talk about the, the four, the kingdoms, the empires that came to scatter us among all nations on earth through slavery. Okay, go ahead. And the Lord showed me four carpenters. And the Lord showed me four carpenters. Go ahead. Then said I, what come these no, to do? What come these to do? Read on. And he speaks, saying, these are the horns which have scattered Judah, so that no man did lift up his head. But these are come to fray them, and to cast out the horns of the Gentiles, which lifted up their horn over the land of Judah to scatter it. So now, what you want to notice is that He's talking about four carpenters, okay? These four carpenters is talking about the leaders that the Lord will send in the last days. But the main one is talking about Jesus the Christ. He is the main carpenter, okay? So guess what? Just as Joseph was the carpenter, Christ was a carpenter as well. He was what? He followed after his father. You understand? That's why he was able to take care of himself. He was able to take care of the basic things in life, okay? Now watch this. Now, we dealt with, he must have a job. Secondly, he must have a roof over his head, okay? Another thing that he must be like, guess what? He must come from a good stock. He must come from a good stock. Give me Tobit, chapter 5, verse 13. Tobit 5, verse 13, he says, he shall leave his father and his mother. Guess what? They two shall be one flesh. Watch this. Give me the book of Tobit, chapter 5, verse 13. He must, meaning, when I say it must come from a good stock, he must come from a good family. But we know that today, we are, as, a, as a nation, we are messed up. That's why now the Lord is waking us up in these last days to come together, to learn the laws of the Most High God, to be able to get ourselves together. Men must be in their proper order. Women must be in their proper order, teaching and educating the children. You understand? So for we, we are now we, we are recreating 
the honor that the Lord gave to us from the beginning. That's what we are doing right now. That's why it is important for you when you come into this truth, the first thing to do is to learn. You study, be quiet, apply the scriptures, build yourself up. You understand? And when you're looking for a spouse, do not go outside. No, no, look for somebody in the congregation. You come in with somebody from the world, they also must come in and learn so you can grow together and build and be able to have a strong marriage according to the scripts. Okay, read that. Tobit, chapter 5, verse 13. The book of Tobit, chapter 5, verse 13. Read. Then Tobit said, Thou art welcome, brother. Be not now angry with me, because I have inquired to know thy tribe and thy family. Read. For thou art my brother of an honest and good stock. For I know Ananias and Jonathas and Jonathas, sons of that great Samias, as we went together to Jerusalem to worship and offered the firstborn and the tenth of the fruits, and they were not said, and they were not seduced with the error of our brethren. My brother, thou art of a good stock. My brother, you are of a good stock. So Tobit is inquiring where this, this, the family this man comes from. You understand? He's inquiring the family this man comes from. It says, for thou art my brother and of an honest and good stock. I know Ananias. I know Ananias. He said, I know Ananias, meaning I know your family. I know the family that you come from. That's what he's saying. Because the family that you come from, because here's, here's one thing that I've noticed is this. The reason why you see that mothers and fathers too, they be selling their daughters off to these men, these wicked men. Yes, he's got a job. Yes, he's got a roof over his head, but he's bugged out. He's crazy. You understand? He's violent. So whatever the case may be, you understand? He's a drunk. So, and so on and so forth. But they're going to say, no, but you are seven so from Nagegel. Not investigating the type of family he comes from. You understand? So these are things that sisters, when they're looking for, 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 for a Lord, these are things that they must look at for. They must look for as well. They must investigate these things. You understand? Even a male rat, I mean, a female rat will never sleep with a male rat if a rat, that rat does not have a nest and or is sick. But not the black woman. She will lay down with a man, whether the man does not have a job, He's still living under his, he's still living with his mother. You understand? She will lay down with him. Okay? So the, the reason why I'm bringing this out to prevent the whoredom that is happening in the nation of Israel. Okay? Read that again, verse 13. The book of Tobit, chapter 5, verse 13. Read. Then Tobit said, Thou art welcome, brother. Be not now angry with me, because I have inquired to know thy tribe, and thy family. You see that thing? Thou, to, know, to know thy tribe and thy family. For that to happen, that means Tobit would have to approve them. He would have to have two. Would you, yes, Muslim, Thomas Anneli. No, sir, Muslim, Fanalu. We know their father. We know, the, we know his mother. We know his father. We know their family and so forth. They know they have a history to make sure that this son is not going to what? He's not going to ill treat this woman or vice versa. This woman is not going to mistreat this man. You understand? That's how we did things in Israel. Not today though. Okay? Read. For thou art my brother of an honest and good stock. Mm -hmm. For I know Ananias and Jonathan, sons of that great Samias. You see as that we thing? went together. He says, for he says, for I know Ananias and Jonathan, sons of that great Samias. So he knows the family member, if you know the family members, you understand they have a good, they have a good name, they have a good reputation. That's why it says, and, and an honest of an honest and good stock. He says he knows all that. Watch this. Give me that in Tobit 7, verse 7. Tobit chapter 7, verse 7 in the Apocrypha. Okay, the book of Tobit, chapter 7, verse 7. Read that. The book of Tobit, chapter 7, verse 7, and placed him and said unto him. Thou art the son of an honest and good man. You see that part right there? You are the son of an honest and good man. Because guess what? Tobit had a good name in Israel. You understand? Read. 
But when he had heard that Tobit was blind, he was sorrowful and wept. So now, but the key here is that Tobit was known in the city and in the gates among the nation of Israel, among the leaders. So guess what? Now when they look at the son now, the son wants to get married. The father-in-law is proving him to see if he's coming from a good family. He said, oh, I know Tobit. You understand? Tobit is a good man. He's an, he's, a, he's an honest and good man. So meaning Tobit is known for his good works. So now they know, okay, he comes from a good family. It's not just because he has a job, he has a roof over his head. He's, he's fit. He's going to be fit to take care of of, of this woman. He doesn't mean that. Okay? He don't mean that. Also, watch this. Give me the book. Give me the book of Ecclesiastes 37 verse 12. This is the recipe for success. This is how to stop baby mamas and baby daddies. Sirach 37 verse 12. The book of Ecclesiastes chapter 37 verse 12. Read. But be continually with a godly man. Be continually with a godly man. You must be continually with a godly man. Read. Whom thou knowest to keep the commandments of the Lord. Whom you know. Not you think. No, you know that they keep the laws of God. You must know. You must, you must be with a godly man who you know they keep the laws of the most High God. Because in order for you to know that, guess what you must do? Give me that in Ecclesiasticus. Same book. Ecclesiasticus chapter 6 verse 7. This is what you have to do. You understand? For you to be sure to know that they keep God's laws. Okay? Read that. The book of Ecclesiasticus chapter 6 verse 7. Go ahead. If thou wouldest get a friend, prove him first. Do what? Prove him first. Prove him first. If you are to get a friend, the friend here is in context in terms of a spouse. You understand? A husband, a wife. If thou wouldest get a friend, prove him first. Read. And be not hasty to credit him. And don't be hasty. Don't be quick to give them credit. You understand? You need to prove them. You, you need to observe. You must watch them to see, would he, are they applying what is written in the scriptures or do they just say they don't apply? You understand? Do they actually believe what is written? And if they, they believe what is written, will they apply? Will they change their ways to do what this Bible says? You understand? How do you prove him? Watch this. Give me the book of 1 John chapter 4. 1 John chapter 4 verse 1. First book of John chapter 4 verse 1. Read. Beloved, believe not every spirit. He says, don't believe every spirit. Okay, go ahead. But try the spirits. But do what? Whether, but try the spirits. But you must try the spirits. You understand? He says, don't believe every spirit, but you must try the spirits. Read. Whether they are of God. Whether they are of the Lord. Read. Because many false prophets are gone out into the world. Because many false prophets are gone out into the world. But he says, but try the spirits, whether they are of God. How do you try them? You try them by the word of God. You understand? The scripture says a man must have a job. So guess what? You don't, you don't, you don't even think of proving or courting with that brother if he does not have a job. You understand? Because to have a job is a law, it's a commandment. Secondly, you must find out, does he have a roof over his head? Is he still living with his mother? You understand? Because if he's still living with his mother, you don't know, you don't have proof that he can be able to handle a family, let alone take care of himself. You don't know if he can take care of himself because if he's still living with his mother, chances are his mother is still making financial decisions in his life. He's also making day-to-day -day decisions in his life. You understand? So... What makes you think that he's going to be able to uh, take care of you when he cannot even take care of himself? Although he's working, but he can't take care of himself. How is he going to take care of you and the family and the children that you will eventually have? He will not, and you can't tell. The good thing would be if he maybe leaves and joins himself to another brother and they share the rent. Then he's learning responsibility. He knows how to be responsible to say, okay, 
I need to work so I can maintain the roof over my head. I must have food so I may be able to maintain myself and so forth. So that's an example of somebody that has sense. You understand? They understand the responsibility that is before them. Okay? That's how you try that spirit. You try the spirit not by emotions, but by the laws of God. Is he applying what the scriptures say? Okay? Read that again, verse 1. First book of John, chapter 4, verse 1. Go ahead. Beloved, believe not every spirit, but try the spirits whether they are of God. Because many false prophets are gone out into the world. Because many false prophets are gone out into the world. Okay? Now, go back to the book of Ecclesiasticus. Sirach chapter 6, verse 7 again. The book of Ecclesiasticus chapter 6, verse 7. If thou wouldst get a friend, prove him first. And be not hasty to credit him. If you were to get a friend, a spouse, a lord, you says you must prove that man first. You understand? Don't be hasty to credit them. How do you prove them? You try them with the word of God. Are they applying what is written? That's how you're going to know. Now go back to Sirach 37 verse 12. Okay? Ecclesiastes 37 verse 12. Read that. The book of Ecclesiastes chapter 37 verse 12. But be continually with the godly man. Mm-hmm. Whom thou knowest to keep the commandments of the Lord. Whom thou knowest to keep the commandments of the Lord. Read. Whose mind is according to thy mind. Whose mind is according to your mind. Meaning what? You, if, the safety net must be the, the scriptures. You believe in Christ. You believe in Christ. He believes on Christ. So the two of you have one foundation. One spirit, one judgment, one faith. You be you now you'll be able to speak the same things. You understand? That's why it says, Whom thou one was to keep the commandments of the Lord, whose mind is according to thy mind, meaning they believe what you believe. Read. And will sorrow with thee if thou shalt miscarry. And they will sorrow with you if you if trouble comes, they are not going to skip town, they're not gonna run away. You understand? That is that that's how you try the spirit. Now watch this. Now we dealt with the men. Okay, this is these are some of the things that when the scriptures say, Shall a man leave his father and his mother? These are the things that you must have. You understand? If you don't have these things, you just want have you have one, but you don't have the others. Guess what? You you you're not ready yet. You are not ready. Watch this. Give me give me the book of Sirach, chapter 7, verse 24. We're gonna deal with the sisters now. Because remember, the man will leave his father and his mother and will cleave to his wife, right? Now watch this. What about the sisters now? Give me that in Sirach chapter 7 verse 24. The book of Ecclesiasticus chapter 7 verse 24. Read. Has thou daughters? Do you have daughters? Has thou daughters? Okay, read. Have a care of their body. Have a care of their body, meaning your job is to watch over them. Make sure that they dress correctly. They be wearing dresses, not pants. They be wearing long dresses, not mini skirts and leggings. You understand? They all be wearing stuff like that. That's what says, have a care of their body. Read. And show not thyself cheerful toward them. And show not yourself cheerful towards them, meaning don't play with them. Why? The reason why you're not supposed to play with the, with the sisters you're supposed to teach them because if you've got daughters, you must groom them. You must prepare them to become wives. You don't prepare them to become girlfriends. You understand? A father does not give their daughter to a boyfriend. A father gives their daughter to a husband. That's what a good father does according to the scriptures. That's a good father right there. A good father will give their daughter to their husband, not to their boyfriend. That's what the scriptures be teaching. Read that again. Verse 24. The book of Ecclesiastes 7 verse 24. Has thou daughters, have a care of their body, and show not thyself cheerful toward them. Show not yourself cheerful towards them. Read on. Marry thy daughter. No, give your daughter to a boyfriend. Marry thy daughter. You see what the scripture says? 
marry your daughter. That means the, the, before the daughter is married, she's under her father's roof. Meaning what? She's her father's possession. Because the first, the, 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 the daughter's first love is her father. You understand? So if as a father, you don't teach the children, you don't teach your daughters anything, you're not a good father according to the scriptures, but you are still teaching them nonetheless. That's why today when you go to, you go to the malls, you are at the taxis, what do you see? Especially during the weekends and all of that, when we be going to camp to teach our people, what I'm, one thing I'm noticing is that you see a father with their daughter, but you can't tell. You can't tell. You see a man walking with a woman, but you can see well, this is a young woman. She's young. And when you investigate, that's her daughter. That's his daughter. But when you look at the way the daughter is dressed up, it's an example that the father is not taking care of this daughter. He is not teaching her how she must conduct herself. That's why you, you see fathers be sleeping with their daughters. Daughters seducing their fathers. You hear the stories. Just watch, just read the Daily Sun. You'll see that stuff. Because these fathers, they leave the house with their daughters. They go to Santon and all of that. Their daughter be wearing a bum short. But that's the daughter. You can make this stuff up. Okay? So he doesn't care about their, his daughter. He doesn't love his daughter. He's a poor father. Okay? Read verse 25 again. No, verse 24 again. The book of Ecclesiasticus, chapter, chapter 7, verse 24. Read. As thou daughters have a care of their body, and show not thyself cheerful toward them. Don't show yourself cheerful towards them, read. Marry thy daughter. Read on. And so shalt thou have performed a weighty matter. So shalt thou have what? And so shalt, and so shalt thou have performed a weighty matter. And so shalt thou have performed a weighty matter. Because marriage is not a small thing. You preparing your daughter for a man, meaning a husband, guess what? It says, you must what? It says, marry your daughter, and so shall thou have performed a weighty matter. Because it's not a small matter to give your daughter to a man that is supposed to take care of her, to take off, to, to continue where you left off. So your job, job as a father, I'm supposed to give my daughters to a man that I know keep the commandments of the Most High. And for me to know, I need to, you need to, about, I need to be around you. You need to be around me. Let me fix that statement. You need to be around me so I can see you, so I can watch you, so I can see how you behave, the things you say, how you speak, how you conduct yourself, how you deal with others. I'm going to be able to know what type of spirit I'm dealing with. You understand? So, read on. But give her to a man of understanding. You see what they say? That's why it says it's a weighty matter. Because in order for you to know that that's a man of understanding, I need to prove you. I need to know that you are studying, you apply, you have a good name in Israel and so forth. That's why it says, but you must give your daughter to a man of understanding, a husband, not a boyfriend. Remember what we read in Hebrews. He says, marriage is honorable. Okay? But what you see today is, you see, fathers be giving their daughters to boyfriends because a boyfriend has got a nice car they don't mind their daughter going off with this man they don't mind that they are prostituting their daughters you understand watch this give me the book of deuteronomy chapter 23 verse 17 i just want to touch on that thing okay i want to touch on that deuteronomy 23 verse 17 The book of Deuteronomy, chapter 23, verse 17. Read. There shall be no whore of the daughters of Israel. Read. No a sodomite of the sons of Israel. He says, there shall be no whore of the daughters of Israel. That's the law. That's the commandments. You understand? That is what the Lord has commanded all of us. No whore of the daughters of Israel. So that's why it says, have, have, has thou daughters have a care of their body? Meaning your job is to make sure that your daughters, they dress well. From a young age, from the moment they are born, your job is to what? Is to make sure that they dress according to the scriptures. They must wear long, beautiful dresses. 
You understand? They must take care of themselves, cover their heads, know how to sit, how to how to bath themselves. That's that's what a parents will do to prepare their daughter for marriage, not to prepare their daughter for a boyfriend. Okay. Read on verse eighteen. Watch this. Thou shalt not bring the you know what? hire well, of a whore. Hold on. Wait, wait, wait. You know what? I'll come back here. I'll come back here. Go back to Sirach 7, verse 25. Read that again. The book of Ecclesiasticus, chapter 7, verse 25. Read. Marry thy daughter. And so shalt thou have performed the weighty matter. Mm -hmm. But give her to a man of understanding. But give your daughter to a man of understanding. That means that's the man that you have proved. Like it says in Sirach 6 and 7. Okay. Now watch this. Give me the book of the history of Susanna. Okay, chapter 1. The history of Susanna, chapter 1, verse 1. Because it says, As thou daughters have a care of their body, you must take care of them. You must make sure, your job is to make sure that your daughter will not leave the house showing her breasts. Your daughter will not leave the house showing her thighs. Your daughter will not leave the house showing her with her stomach out. That's not happening. Okay? That's the job of a good parent. Watch this. History of Susanna, chapter 1, verse 1. History of Susanna, chapter 1, verse 1. There dwelt a man in Babylon called Joachim. Joachim, read on. And he took a wife mm -hmm. whose name was Susanna. Read. The daughter of Chelsea's. Ch Chelsea's Chelsea read. The daughter of Chelsea's, a very fair woman, and one that feared the Lord. So it says, This woman, our, for our foremother Susanna, it says, She feared the Lord. Meaning, this was a righteous woman right here, was a virtuous woman. Go ahead. Her parents also were righteous and taught their daughter according to the law of Moses. Read. Read that again. Now, Joy, history of Susanna, chapter 1, verse 3. Her parents also were righteous mm -hmm. and taught their daughter according to the law of Moses. He says her parents also were righteous, meaning she had, she, she's coming from a good family, like we read in Tobit 5. That's why Tobit was inquiring about this thing. That's why Reguel also was inquiring about Tobias. You understand? But when he found out, when he knew Tobit, he knew that, you know, he's coming from a good stock right here. Because I know Tobit. So likewise, it says, her parents also were righteous and taught their daughter according to the law of Moses. So she knew the law. She was a wise sister. Okay? She was a wise sister. So while you are under your parents' house as a sister, your job is to do what? Your job is to learn how to be a wife. And where do you learn that stuff from? You learn from your mother. You understand? Your mother must teach you how to make sure that the house is, on, is in order. You understand? You make sure that she knows how to uh, take care of their father. You understand? So on and so forth. Those things is preparation for marriage. You understand? And when you get married, you're not going to struggle. You, is, you're not going to be, you're not going to be, um, you're not going to bring shame to your father's house. But agakonu pega. She doesn't know how to, none of that stuff. You see, you are bringing shame to your father's house. So that's why it is important to learn those skills. Okay? Watch this. Give me, give me the book of Ecclesiasticus 42 verse 9. The book of Ecclesiasticus 42 verse 9. Mm. The father waited for the daughter. When no man knoweth. You see that thing? Yeah, it says, the father waketh for the daughter when no man knoweth. Read. And the care of her, and the care for her taketh away sleep. Read. When she's young, lest she pass away the flower of her age and be merry, lest she should be hated. So now what you want to notice here says, the father waketh for the daughter when no man knoweth. Meaning what? The father watcheth for the daughter. The father waketh for the daughter. They, he waketh and he watcheth for the daughter. He teaches the daughter the laws of God. 
You understand? Not only that, but he's the one that is waking up to go and work for the family to, to, to take care of the wife and the children. That's what the father is doing. So now, imagine now, that's why it says, give it to a man of understanding because that's a weighty matter because of what we're reading here. The father is, is, is fighting left, right, and center to make sure that they are, his daughters are on point. Okay? Read that again, verse 9. The book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 42, verse 9. The father waiteth for the daughter when no man knoweth, and the care for her taketh away sleep. Read. When she is young, lest she should, lest she pass away the flower of her age, and be married, lest she should be hated. So now it says, lest she pass away the flower of her age. This also goes into what? She loses her virginity while she's under her father's roof. Because that's a common thing today now. This was never a common thing. It was never a normal thing. It was out of order. It was back then, it's still out of order today. That's why the sisters that you are no longer, um, you've passed the flower of your age and all of that, guess what? Your job now is to, if you're no longer a virgin, you've dealt with a man before, but you're still not married, guess what? Your job is to do what? Keep the legs closed, open the Bible. Now it's time for you to learn, to repent. You understand? To prepare yourself for a Lord that's going to take care of you and take care of your children if you have kids and so forth. If you're not, guess what? You still have to do that. You're not allowed to be a girlfriend until... Uh, you're not allowed to be a girlfriend, period, because that's not in the Bible. You are still your father's position until he, he sends you off to a husband. That's, how the, that's what the Most High God wants. And what the Lord wants, the Lord will get. Okay, watch this. Um, give me Tobit 7 verse 13 now. Tobit chapter 7 verse 13. You know what? Mm, before we get Tobit, keep going. Read verse 10. Sirach 42 verse 10. The book of Ecclesiastes chapter 42 verse 10. In her virginity, lest she should be defiled and gotten with child in her father's house. Read that part again. The book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 42, verse 10. In her virginity. Uh -huh. In her virginity. In her virginity, meaning she's a young woman of marriageable age and she has not dealt with a man. Read. This she should be defiled uh -huh. and gotten with child in her father's house. That she should be defiled and gotten with child in her father's house. Now she's defiled under her, in her father's house. That's a common thing today in Israel. You understand? Sisters be having sex. They are not married. They have not been given. Their hand has not been given in marriage to a husband. You understand? They are abusing themselves. So, guess what? When you do that, guess what? You are bringing shame to your father's house. And because, you know what? We like to find loopholes. You know how Israel is. The black man, the black woman, they are always finding loopholes, work around. When it says, under your father's house, let's say you are not under your father's house physically, but you have a job as a sister. You are working somewhere, okay? You have a roof over your head and so forth. You're paying rent and all that. You are still under your father's house because you have not been given, uh, your, your, your father has not given your hand in marriage. You understand? So you can't say, oh no, but I'm not staying under my father's house. I have, uh, I'm renting and so on and so forth. No, no, that doesn't count. That don't mean nothing in the sight of God. It doesn't mean nothing. You are still under your father's house. And you get yourself pregnant. You deal with a man. You're not married. You are defiling yourself, bringing shame to his house. Okay? Read. And, have, and having an husband, mm -hmm. lest she should misbehave herself. And when she's married, lest she should be barren. You see that thing? Now she gets married. Now she's barren. She cannot have. She cannot conceive. Why? Because the babies were being killed through abortion, and so forth. Now it's time for you to get married. Now you cannot conceive. But because some sisters, they will not tell you the truth. They've have a, they've had many many multiple abortions. Now you keep trying for a child. You cannot get a child. Why? She's sitting on a secret. She's not telling you nothing. 
You understand? So these are things that we have to make sure that we prevent with the word of God as men, as fathers. Tobit chapter 7, verse 13. Come on. Tobit 7, verse 13. The book of Tobit, chapter 7, verse 13. Read. Then he called his daughter Sarah. Mm -hmm. And she came to her father. Come on. And he took her by the hand and gave her to be wife to Tobias. You see that thing? It says she came to her father because she's still in her father's position. That's why I said she came to her father, okay, and he, her father, took her by the hand and gave her to be wife to Tobias. Not to be girlfriend to Tobias, but to be wife. You understand? To be wife to Tobias. So because every sister, every woman can get a man. Let me say that again. Every sister, every woman can get a man, but not everyone can get a husband. Not every sister can get a husband, but you can get a man anytime. But a husband, no. If you don't humble down to do what this Bible says, it's not going to work out. And if you do get a husband in the world, guess what? You're going to be miserable because you're not moving according to the laws of God. You understand? He's not moving according to the laws of God. On the weekends when he leaves, you, you're always wondering if he's, is, he's banging some chick somewhere. You don't know. Okay? So now you have a marriage from hell. Okay? That's why it is important for you from your father's house, you go to your husband's house. You understand? That's how it is. If you sisters don't have fathers and all of that, we are your fathers. We are going to teach you according to the scriptures. We will protect you according to the laws of God. But us protecting you, we're going to tell you the truth. You must apply exactly what we tell you. Don't go outside of the cancer we give you. Do exactly as you are commanded and you're going to be fine. You understand? Read on. And he took Read. her by the hand. Read the verse again. Tobit 7 verse 13. The book of Tobit 7 verse 13. Then he called his daughter Sarah and, and she came to her father. And he took her by the hand and mm -hmm. gave her to be wife to Tobias. Go ahead. Say, behold, take her after the law of Moses. Read. And lead her away to thy father. And he blessed him. You see that thing? And he blessed them. He said, take her after the law of Moses and lead her away to thy father. And he blessed them. That's the only time when the blessings come. Because the father is given consent. Because the father determines the marriage. If the father says, I don't want you to get married, you're not going to get married. And if you do, do get married, despite what your father says, that marriage is not going to be successful. So now, watch this. Give me Tobit chapter 8 verse 7. Because I mentioned that from your father's house, you go to your husband's house. That's why we read in Sirach 7. It says, uh, marry thy daughter, because you, so thou shalt have be performed a weighty matter, but give it to a man of understanding. You understand? Watch this. Um, Tobit chapter 8 verse 7. The book of Tobit chapter 8 verse 7. Mm. And now, Ulu, I take not this my sister for lust. I do what? But I take not this my sister for lust. He says, I take not this my sister for lust. Read. But uprightly. Mm -hmm. Therefore, mercifully ordain that we, that we may become aged together. That we may become what? That we may become aged together. That we may become aged together. But he says, I says, I take not this my sister for lust, but uprightly. When you are a girlfriend, guess what? You have not been taken uh, uh, uprightly. You're only dealing with that sister according because of your lust. I take not this my sister for lust. If you're a girlfriend, yes, you've been taken just for lust. Not for marriage, but just for lust. You understand? Now go to Deuteronomy 23 verse 17 now. So the job, the job of a father is to make sure that these things happen, what to do and what not to do. Okay? Read that. 
23 verse 17. The book of Deuteronomy, chapter 23 verse 17. Mm -hmm. There shall be no whore of the daughters of Israel. Great. No sodomites of the sons of Israel. No sodomites, meaning gays, homosexuals. Okay. There shall be no whore of the daughters of what? Of the daughters of Israel. No whore. To prevent the whoredom, guess what? What we just read, this is, these were pre preventative laws. These were laws to prevent Israel from whoring themselves out and whoring their, their daughters out. That's why these laws were set up. Okay. Um, read on. Next, next verse. Verse 18. The book of Deuteronomy, chapter 23, verse 18. Mm -hmm. Thou shalt not bring the hire of a whore or the price of a dog into Read. the house of the Lord thy God for any vow. For even both these are abomination unto the Lord thy God. Now watch this. What I want to show you here is, it says, thou shalt not bring the hire of a whore or the price of a dog. The hire of a whore. I agree, a whore we know is a prostitute. Or a sister that deals with men, she's not married. That's what the Bible calls it. So to stop whoredom in Israel, this is what needs to happen. We need to stop doing that. You're not married, you have no business having sex. It's that simple. You understand? Watch this. It says, thou shalt not bring the hire of a whore. Because there was something that is hired is not, is not, is not, is not a permanent um, it's not a, something that I owe, I owe permanently. It's a temporary possession. I use it after I'm done. I take it back. You understand? That's what it means, the hire of a whore or the price of a dog. Let's deal with that. Give me the book of Genesis. Okay. Genesis chapter 38. Genesis chapter 38 and verse... We're going to start at verse 15. Mm, you know what? Let's start at verse 13. Genesis 38 verse 13. We're going to read down. The book of Genesis of 38, verse 13. Mm -hmm. And it was told Tamar, say, and it was told Tamar, say, behold, thy father-in-law goes up to, Tam to Timna to shear his sheep. Read. And she put her widow's garment off from her and covered her with a veil and wrapped herself and sat in an open place, which is by the way to Timna. For she saw that Sheila was grown and she was not given unto him to wife. So now what we're reading here is, is our former, is our, is our sister Tamar. Okay. Tamar, she decided, you know what? I'm going to cause Tamar's, Tamar's husband died. Okay. So now Tamar is a widow. Now she's supposed to put on a widow's garment to mourn for her dead husband. Now she decided, you know what? I don't really want to wait for that. I'm going to follow my father-in-law to where he's going. Okay, that's what Tamar is doing. Read verse 15. When Judah saw her, he thought her to be an harlot. Either he did what? When Judah saw her, he thought her to be an harlot. So when Judah saw this woman, she, he thought, this, this is a whore, this is a prostitute here. Okay, because she had covered her face. That's why if you see these Muslim women, they be covering their face and all of that, wearing like ninjas and all. That's how the prostitutes used to wear back then. So you don't see their face, what they look like. And they used to wear promiscuous outfit, but they covered their face. They made sure their face is covered so nobody knows who they are. You understand? So what we're, what, what we're reading here is Tema now, she put on the garments of a whore and harlot. Okay? Watch this. Verse 16. The book of Genesis chapter 8, verse 16. Mm -hmm. And he turned unto, and he turned unto her by the way, and said, Go to, I pray thee, let me come in unto thee. For he knew not that she was his daughter-in-law. And she said, What wilt thou give me, that thou mayest come in unto me? You see that thing? So she's asking, okay, you want to sleep with me? How much you want? That's what is called the price of a dog. Okay. She's asking this man. Um, and she said, what will thou give me that thou mayest come in unto me? What are you going to give me for sleeping with me? That's the price of a whore. That's the price of a dog. That's the same thing today. 
The sisters, they see a nice Golf, a nice GTI, a nice BMW. Already they drop the pants, which they know have no business wearing pants in the first place. You understand? But because of what they see, now they have a prize to give themselves up to a man who don't give a damn. And that's why today we have baby mamas, children, women, sisters raising children on their own. Why? Because they made poor choices when it comes to men. I'll give an example of what I mean by that. Give me Sirach 26. Sirach 23. No, Sirach 26 verse 23. Because guess what? Sisters, we must hold you accountable. Okay? The reason why you see today there's baby mamas. Okay? There's women um, that have committed abortions and all of that. That's, that's because that's the poor choices that they have made. Watch this. Sirach 26 verse 23. But there is a way. There is a solution. The solution is what? You must repent. Keep the commandments of the Lord. Thou shalt not commit adultery. You are not married. Do not have, be having sex. Because that's a sin. That saith the Lord. Okay? Read that. Sirach 26 verse 23. The book of Ecclesiastes is 26 verse 23. Read. A wicked woman is given as a portion to a wicked man. You see what the Bible is saying? It says a wicked, a wicked woman is given as a portion to a wicked man. Meaning what? If you are dealing, if you are, if, if you have a good, if you have, you have a no good man, which that's because what? That's because you yourself as a sister, something is not right with you. You are also in some sin. So the Lord says, I'm going to give you an ungodly man because you are ungodly yourself. And you too shall be two simps. Okay? So read that again, verse 23. The book of Ecclesiastes is 26, verse 23. A wicked woman is given as a portion to a wicked man. Read. But a godly woman is given to him that feareth the Lord. You see that thing? So if you are a godly sister, you are going to, the Lord will allow you to be given to a man a godly man, a man of understanding like we read in Sirach 7. Okay? The same thing. So what I want to show you here is that the most that God is saying, listen, if you want a godly man, you must be a godly woman. So guess what? Your job is to do what? The first mistake, you have a child, you are not married, he doesn't want to marry you, you didn't know. guess what? It's time to make better choices. So you cannot have baby number two again with somebody different. Baby number three, somebody different, so on and so forth. No, you need to have learned from your mistakes. Okay, watch this. Give me... Um, go back to where was that? Go back to Genesis 38. Okay. Genesis chapter 38, verse 16 again. The book of Genesis chapter 38, verse 16. Mm -hmm. And he turned unto her by the way and said, Go to, I pray thee, and may come in unto thee. For he knew not, for he knew not that she was his daughter-in-law. You see that thing? And because she, he, know that she, he didn't know that this was Tamar, his daughter-in-law. Read. And she said, what wilt thou give me that thou mayest come in unto me? What are you going to give me for you to sleep with me? That was the question she asked. So now, watch this. Give me... Give me the book of Exodus, chapter 22 now, verse 16. Because, um, you know what? Go back to Deuteronomy 23. Let's finish that up. Let's finish that verse because I didn't take the meat, the complete meat of the bone. So let's go back there. Deuteronomy chapter 23, verse 18. Read that. The book of Deuteronomy, chapter 23, verse 18. Read. Thou shalt not bring the hire of a whore. Mm -hmm. Oh, the price of a dog into Read. the house of thy God for any vow. For even both these are abominations unto the Lord thy God. He says, even these are abominations unto the Lord thy God. So now when we go back, now we understand that um, the hire of a whore is talk about a girlfriend. Because you are hired. You are not married. They have only just taken you for, for lust, for sex. That's it. You understand? Not for marriage, but for lust. So now, watch this. Give me 
Give me the book of Exodus 22, verse 16. Because when you are under your father's roof, these are the things that your father will teach you to prevent baby mama drama, baby mamas. You understand? Teenage pregnancy and abortion. Okay? That I can do bad by myself. No, no, no. You're supposed to follow the instruction of your father. Watch this. Give me that in Exodus 22, verse 16. The book of Exodus 22, verse 16. Right. And if a man entice a maid that is not betrothed and lie with her, mm -hmm. he shall surely endow her to be his wife. He shall surely endow, her, uh, endow this woman to be his wife. Now, what I want to show you here is that if a man entice a maid, read verse 16 again. The book of Exodus 22, verse 16. Right. If, and if a man entice a maid that is not betrothed and lie with her, he shall surely endow her to be his wife. So now it says, if a man entice a maid, does a man even allow to entice a maid? Ukshela. No. You see a sister, you stay away from the sister. That's why he is saying um, in Exodus 22, 16, it says, and if a man entice a maid that is not betrothed, meaning the sister is single, she is not promised to any man. She is single. Guess what? She is her father's possession. Okay? Then it says, and lie with her, meaning you have sex with this woman now. He says, he shall surely endow her to be his wife. Now watch this. Give me that in Exodus, Exodus 20, verse 17. I want to show you something about this verse because he says, if a man entice a mate, meaning ushala umfas, you run game on the sister. You are not even supposed to do that, nor allowed to do it in the first place. Okay, why? Because you'll be violating this law that we're about to read. Exodus 20, verse 17. The book of Exodus, so 20, verse 17. Read. Thou shalt not covet thy neighbor's house. Thou shalt not covet thy neighbor's wife. Mm -hmm. No his manservant, no his maidservant, no his ox, no his ass, no anything that is thy neighbor's. No anything that is thy neighbor's. So when it says, if a man entice a maid that is not betrothed, he is not supposed to entice no maid. You know, he's not supposed to do that. Because guess what? If you are enticing a maid, it means what? That's against the law. We're talking about this, the spirit of covetousness here. You understand? The spirit of covetousness, that's a law. So when you entice a maid, you are breaking this law because the, that woman, is a, is a, she's still a man's possession. Her father in this context. You understand? Read that again, verse 17. The book of Exodus, chapter 20, verse 17. Thou shalt not covet thy neighbor's house. Thou shalt not covet thy neighbor's wife. No his man servant, no his maid servant, no his ox, no his ass, no anything that is thy neighbor's. You see that thing? No anything that is thy neighbor. That includes his daughters. That's the father's position until such time it's time to get married and now the father has proved this man he knows keeps the commandments and so forth the sister has done the same there's no confusion you understand but here read verse 17 again so i can catch myself the book of exodus chapter 20 verse 17 thou shalt not cover thy neighbor's house mm -hmm. thou shalt not cover thy neighbor's wife no his man servant no his maid servant no his ox, no his ass, no anything that is thy neighbor's. No anything that is thy neighbor's. So as long as she's still, um, the father did not give you a hand in marriage, you are still under your father's house and you are your father's possession. Okay, watch this. Um, give me that in, uh, go back to Exodus 22. Read verse 16 again. Come on, Exodus 22 verse 16. Read that. The book of Exodus, 22, verse 16. And if a man entice a maid that is not betrothed and lie with her, he shall surely endow her to be his wife. He shall surely endow her to be his wife. And guess what? The father and the mother, they are the one, the parents are going to consent to this, they're going to consent this marriage. They are the gatekeepers. Okay? Read on. If her father utterly refused to give her unto him, 
he shall pay money according to the dowry of virgins. You see what he's saying? It says, if her father utterly refused to give her unto him. So guess what? Because when you entice a maid, that's very disrespectful because that means you want to go around, you want to bypass the father to get to his daughter. And that's what's going on in Israel today. You understand? You want to go around the father to get to the daughter. His position. And now, verse 17 says, verse 18, he says, thou shalt, no, no, verse 17, if a father utterly refuses, he says, listen, yes, you, must, you defile my daughter because now you have defiled the man's position by sleeping with his daughter behind his back because you do not want to go through the proper channels. You're supposed to send the uncles to go there to deal with the father, the, the, the father of the child and so forth. But if you, are, you go directly to the daughter, guess what? He says, the father utterly refused to give her unto him. He shall pay money according to the dowry of virgins. Meaning what? The father says, no, you're not going to marry my daughter. I don't, you're not good for my daughter. You're not fit to marry my daughter. Keep it moving, kick rocks. Guess what? You still get to pay the damages that you've caused by defiling the man's position. Because the daughter is the, his position until he's married, until she's married. Watch this, Sirach 36, verse 24. In the Apocrypha, Ecclesiasticus 36, verse 24. The book of Ecclesiasticus, chapter 36, verses 24. Read. He that gets at the wife, beginneth a possession. Mm -hmm. A help like unto himself, and a pillar of rest. And a what? And a pillar of rest. And a pillar of rest. Now, that's a topic for another day. But the key is, is that he that getteth a wife beginneth a possession. So guess what? Before she can become a wife, she is a what? She's under her father's roof. She is her father's possession at that point. You understand? Watch this. Give me. Now, what I want to do is I want to touch on because we dealt with the, with the man when he leaves his father and his mother and he shall cleave to his wife and they too shall be one flesh. All praises. Now, we dealt, now we are dealing with the sister now, the, the daughters, that to prevent what we're about to read, Sirach 42 verse 11, because this is one of the number one causes of teenage pregnancy and abortions in the black community. Watch this, Sirach 42 verse 11. The book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 42, verse 11. Keep a short watch over a shameless daughter. You see what the Lord is saying? Because verse 9, it says, the father waketh for the daughter. That's what a good father does. They wake up for their daughter. They take care of them. This is their position. That's why in Sirach 7, it says, make sure that you give it to a man of understanding because that's a weighty matter. Okay, go ahead. The book of Ecclesiasticus, chapter 42, verse 7. The book of Ecclesiasticus, chapter 42, verse 11. Read. Keep a sure watch over a shameless daughter. Keep a sure watch over a shameless daughter. Because in verse 9 it says, the father waketh for the daughter. He says, you must keep a sure watch over a shameless daughter. Or, if your daughter is not shameless, but you, you must still keep a sure watch to make sure that she does not become shameless in the future. Read. Lest she make thee a laughing stock to thine enemies, and a byword in the city, and a reproach among the people, and make thee ashamed before the multitude. So, what we are trying to prevent is what? Lest she make thee a laughing stock among thine enemies, meaning your people that hate you and despise you, and a byword in the city, and a reproach among the people and make thee ashamed before the multitude. That is what you want to prevent as a father. And the sisters that they are no longer virgins, virgins and all of that, you are a new creature now in Christ. Your job is to prepare yourself for a marriage, not boyfriend, none of that stuff. Okay, watch this. Give me, Sarah 26 verse 10. We're still dealing with what we need to prevent. We need to prevent what we're reading now also. Yes, we, we need to understand the sisters must be 
their father is is whom who they are going to marry you know a man that is like their father okay so read that Sarah 26 verse 10 so we are trying to prevent this so you don't bring shame to your father's house read that the book of Ecclesiastes of 26 verse 10 read thy daughter be shameless keep her in strength that she abuse herself to over much liberty so now he says, if thy daughter be shameless, remember it says, watch over an, a shameless daughter. That's what we read in Sirach 42 verse 11. Now Sirach is repeating himself again. It says, if, thou daughter, if thy daughter be shameless, keep her in straight, meaning what? Lock her behind in the house. Don't make sure she, make sure she goes nowhere. You understand? Well, that's, what, that's what this is going into. Okay, read that again. The book of Ecclesiasticus, 26 verse 10. If thy daughter is shameless, keep her in straightening, lest she abuse herself through over much liberty. Lest she abuse herself through over much liberty, meaning what she's got too much time on her hands. She's got time for boyfriends. She's got time to go out to party. You understand? She dress however she wants. She, they stay up late. She drinks, they smoke. Because Salekas, we see these things. The sisters now be drinking more. They be smoking more. We're not saying it's allowed when the brothers do do it, meaning when the brothers be smoking, we are not condoning that. They are out of order. It's against the law of the Most High God. The point is this. We are dealing with the sisters now. Okay? Watch this. Lest she abuse herself through over much liberty. Read verse 12 now. Watch this. She will open her mouth as a thirsty traveler when he had found a fountain and drink of every water near her. Read. By every hedge will she sit down and open a quiver against every arrow. So now what we're, this is a metaphor for a, a, a daughter that is shameless. It says uh, she will open her mouth as a thirsty traveler when he had found a fountain. Watch this. Give me that in Proverbs chapter 30 verse 20. Because it says she will open her mouth as a thirsty traveler. This is a metaphor for something different, for something else. It's a metaphor for what? Watch this. Proverbs 30 verse 20. The book of Proverbs chapter 30 verses 20. Read. Such is the way of an adulterous woman. And so the subject matter here is about an adulterous woman, meaning a woman that has sex outside of marriage. That's an adulterous woman. Read. She eaten and wiped the mouth and said, mm -hmm. I have done no wickedness. So obviously it's not talking about bananas. It's not talking about, um, it's not talking about, it's not talking about pizza here. Because here it says, the subject matter is an adulterous woman. Isn't it, isn't it, is she not supposed to eat bread? Is she not supposed to have yogurt, for instance? No, she can have those things. So he's not talking about that here. That's why he made, he made it a point to mention, to give you a clue. I'm talking about an adulterous woman. It says she eateth and wipeth her mouth. So he's not talking about eating raw. No, no. She's eating men's private parts. That's what she's doing. She be sucking on everything that she finds. She finds performing oral sex and all of that. That's what this is talking about. He's talking about oral sex. Sisters performing oral sex. She will perform oral sex and after that, she will wipe her mouth and say, I have done no wickedness. I didn't do nothing. Okay? That's the point. Let's go back. No, Sarah 26. Sarah 26 verse 12. The book of Ecclesiastes chapter 26 verse 12. Read. She will open her mouth as a thirsty traveler when he really? had found a fountain mm -hmm. and drink of every water near her, by every hedge will she sit down and open a quiver against every arrow. He says, by every hedge will she sit down, meaning by every penis she will sit down and open a quiver, meaning open her vagina against every penis. That's what the scripture is going into here. You understand? So what the, the, key, the key is verse 10 again. Read verse 10. Watch this. The book of Ecclesiasticus, chapter 26, verse 10. If thy daughter be shameless, keep her in straightly, 
Let she abuse herself through over much liberty. You see that part right there? Let she abuse herself through over much liberty. How is she abusing herself? She's letting men abuse her cooking. That's what she's doing. She's letting men abuse her box. What's between her knees? She's letting men abuse it. You know, this year she's dating this man. The next year she's dating that other man. Or every six months there's a new boyfriend. She's, your cookie is getting abused and used. You understand? So your, our job, the job of the fathers is to prevent this from happening. That's why it says, show not thyself cheerful towards them. Don't play with the sisters when it comes to this because the reason why we're getting, we're getting on the sisters is this. When you open your knees to that man, he sexes you, he leaves you with a child. Guess what? He can easily say, that's not mine. I don't, I'm not, I don't want to take care of that baby. And he's gone, disappeared. Now he's, you are by yourself. Now he's, you have a baby now. Now you have to take care of this baby as well. Now you have to take care of the baby by yourself. You see that thing? So it's very, very paramount for you to be mindful and hearken to what's coming out. Because this is your medicine. Okay? Um, let's go to the book of 1 Timothy chapter 5, verse 13. 1 Timothy chapter 5, verse 13. All of this is what? Is what a father does to prevent the stuff that we are seeing today because the Lord, he left the blueprint for us. Our job is to apply what is written. 1 John chapter 5. I mean, 1 Timothy chapter 5, verse 13. Read there. 1 Book of Timothy chapter 5, verses 13. Read. And withal, they learn to be idle. They do what? And with all, they learn to be idle. They learn to be idle. So don't allow your daughter to be idle. You must well put them to work. Make them wash the dishes. They must clean. They must mop the floor. They must fold the clothes, so on and so forth. That's the job. You're making sure that they are not idle. Okay, go ahead. Wandering about from house to house. You see that thing? When you don't put a leash on your daughters, they're going to be wandering from house to house. That's what you are seeing today. You see it in the locations. You see, you see it in the suburbs. Young girls just be what? Just be wandering around. You understand by themselves. In the, in the, in the, in the, in, in during the day, they be moving from house to house. You understand? That's why during the lockdown, the first wave that came, that shocked everyone. When it was done, when it was finished, they say close to one million babies were aborted during that time period of the first wave by black women. Nine million. No, no, close to one million, I'm sorry. Not nine. Close to one million babies were aborted. Close to one million during that time. That's a lot. You understand? And these are, the stats that I'm giving you is the documented cases. We are not including the undocumented cases, which is more obvious. Okay, read that again, verse 13. First book of Timothy, chapter 5, verse 13. Mm. And with all, they learn to be idle, read. wandering about from house to house. Go ahead. Not only idle, but tattlers also, and busybodies, mm -hmm. speaking things which they ought not. You see what he's saying? It says, and with all, they learn to be idle, wandering about from house to house. And, and it says not only idle, but, but what? But tattlers also and busy bodies speaking things which they ought not. That's this. That, oh my God. You don't see that today? You only hear the conversation of these young girls. They already tell you about, they already, you already hear, you hear them talk about oral sex. How do they know that? 15 years old, that's the stuff you hear now. Why? Because they are what? They are too idle. Because today, parents, mothers especially, they be what? They be raised, especially you see mothers that they're boys. Because I used to work at Kirk Crusaders. And what I would notice that I saw Abu Koko, mothers and what? Yeah, mothers and fathers too. But what I saw is you see mothers instead of sitting down with their children to teach them, no, they don't do that. They'll rather go and buy an Xbox for them. 
they'll rather buy and go and, and whatever, something that will, you know, keep them away from you. That is what we're reading here. Because why? They are not being taught how to make proper and sound decisions according to the laws of God. Speaking things they ought not. The things they speak is the things that will bring shame to your house. Okay? So our job as fathers is to prevent that stuff. Okay? Watch this. Give me... You know what? Keep going. Read verse 14. Watch this. First book of Timothy, chapter, four, chapter 5, verse 14. Read. I will therefore... I will therefore that the younger woman marry bear children, guide the house, give none occasion to adversary to speak reproachfully. So now what I wanted to show you here in verse 14, that is, that's what, go back to, hold this, give me, go back to Sirach 7, Sirach 7, 25, so we don't lose the thought, okay? The book of Ecclesiasticus, chapter 7, verse 25. Read. Marry thy daughter. Marry thy daughter. And so shalt thou have performed a weighty matter. Mm -hmm. But give her to a man of understanding. But give her to a man of understanding. He says, marry thy daughter, and so shalt thou have performed a weightier matter. Meaning a serious business that um, a father does. Watch this. First Timothy chapter 5 verse 14 now. Read that again. First book of Timothy chapter 5 verse 14. Mm -hmm. I will therefore that the young woman marry, bear children, guide the house, give none occasion to the adversary to speak reproachfully. So now, you see that part where it says, I will therefore that the younger woman marry. So what comes first? What comes first is marriage. Marriage is the first thing. You understand? That's why we read it says, man shall leave his father and his mother and they too shall be one flesh. For that to happen, guess what? You need to have made sure that the brother has a job, he's got a place to stay, he comes from a good family, or he's got a good name in Israel because the leaders, the leadership is able to vouch for the brother because the brother is, is well versed in the scriptures, he applies, he's got the wisdom of the Most High God, he's got a good name, he's got a good report in the congregation and among Israel to deal, to what? To guide the people, to wake up the children of Israel, sons and daughters and so forth so now marry so marriage comes first marriage comes first bear children in order for you to bear children sex needs to take place and sex can only happen according to the most High god under the covenant of marriage but today you see the opposite everything is upside down they start with the sex first and hope that they're going to get married let me say that again in case I started. The sisters, they start with the sex first in the hopes that they will get married. Why buy the car if you can get the milk for free? God gave us already an order of how to do things here. He says, marry, your younger women must marry. They bear children. In order for you to bear children, sex needs to have taken place. Sex only takes place or supposed to allow to take place under the coverage or covenant of marriage. You understand? Guide the house. Meaning take care of your household. Make sure your house is in order. Okay? Be that virtuous woman. Be that Proverbs 31 woman. Where are you learning this stuff from? You are learning this from your mother. Your mother is doing things in the house, taking care, ordering the house. Your job is to do the same. To learn from her. So that you are being prepared for a husband. Okay? It says... Give none occasion to the adversary to speak reproachfully, to speak evil of marriage. Because now, when brothers and sisters say, you know what, I'm going to repent. I don't want to do nothing outside of this Bible. The world, because the world is blind, they look at you as stupid. You think you are better and all. Don't listen to that garbage. Apply it to the, the laws of the Most High. Okay? That is what the Lord is commanding each and every one of us. Apply what is written. Okay, this is the order. Now watch this. Now let's go back to, let's go to Matthew 19. Let's use the one in Matthew. Matthew chapter 19 and verse 5. The book of Matthew chapter 19 verse 5. And say, Read. for this cause 
Charlemagne leave father and mother uh-huh. and shall cleave to his wife. And they shall cleave to his wife. And they Go twain ahead. shall be one flesh. And they twain shall be one flesh, one flesh, one flesh. Now, give me the book of Ecclesiasticus, okay? Give me Ecclesiasticus 25 and 1. He says, and they too shall be one flesh. Is that 25 and 1? The book of Ecclesiasticus, chapter 25, verse 1. In three things I was beautified and stood up beautiful before God and men. No. The unity of brethren. He says, stood up bo- beautiful both before God and men. Go ahead. And stood up beautiful both before God and men. The unity of the unity of brethren. Go ahead. The love of neighbors. Mm. A man and a wife that agree together. A man and a wife that agree together. So when it says they two shall be one flesh, it's talking about you must agree as one. You understand? You must agree. You must speak the same things. And the way you speak the same things. The system must understand this thing right here. For that marriage to be successful, everybody must submit themselves to the roles that the Lord has set up. Anybody moves outside of that role, you're going to have problems in the marriage. You're going to have problems in this marriage. There's going to be problems in the house. Okay? Read verse 1 again. The book of Ecclesiastes, 25 verse 1. In three things I was beautified and stood up beautiful. Both before God and men, the unity of brethren, the love of neighbors, a man and a wife that agree together. A man and a wife that agree together. This is one of the key ingredients of a successful marriage. When a man and a woman agree together. But how does that agreement come to pass? Watch this. This is what the sister must understand. This is what the brother must understand. First Corinthians 11 verse 3. Let's read that. You know what? Give me Proverbs 8 verse 4. Proverbs 8 and verse 4. Read that. The book of Proverbs chapter 8 verse 4. Unto you, O men, I call, and my voice is to the sons of men. My voice is to the sons of men. So it says, unto you, O men, I call. Meaning the Lord, the Moses God called the men first. The men come first. You understand? That's why Adam was first formed, then Eve. You understand? The Lord deals with the men first and foremost. The men, he deals with them because the men are the leaders to guide the nations. You understand? Watch this. Give me Ezekiel 34, 31. Ezekiel chapter 34. 34 and verse 31. Read that. The book of Ezekiel chapter 34, verse 31. Go ahead. And ye, my flock, the flock of my pasture, amen. You see that thing? Hold on. And ye, my flock, the flock of my pasture, are men. Men. Men are the leaders. Go ahead. And I am your God, said the Lord God. You see that thing? I am your God, said the Lord God. So what are we reading here? The scriptures, the Bible. The Bible is teaching us that the man comes first. That's why it says a man and a wife that agree together. The woman must understand because there are a lot of the times where there's confusion in the house, there's fightings, you understand, there's trouble in the flesh. 90% of the time is because of the woman. Why? Because she does not want to submit herself to the role that God gave her in this union, in this marriage. As long as the sisters do not submit themselves to the role that God gave them in terms of marriage, as they were submitting themselves to their fathers, you're going to have problems in the house. Because how can they do something they've never learned before? Because I get under your father's house, your job is to listen to your father to do what? To teach you how to be, how to act. Then you look at learning from the mother, how she knows how to cook, how to dress, to bath, and so on and so forth. Okay. These are things that you must know. 1 Corinthians 11, verse 3. 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 3. But I would have you know that the head of every man is Christ, 
And the head of the woman is the man. And the head of Christ is God. You notice here, he didn't say the, the head of the woman is the husband. He didn't say that. He says, the head of every man is Christ. And the head of the woman is the man. He didn't say is her husband. The way the head of the woman is the man, period. That includes the father, that includes the husband, that includes your brother. You understand? All of that. That's what is, this is going into. Read that again. The book of Corinthians, first book of Corinthians, chapter 11, verse 3. But I would have you know that the head of every man is Christ, and the head of the woman is the man, and the head of Christ is God. So verse 3 is the order, is God's divine order. This is ordained of God from heaven above and to the earth beneath. So now what we're reading here is the order that the Lord has set up. The minute, if you want men and women, men and a wife that agree together, this needs to happen. The woman must agree to this and the man must agree to this. So both the man and the woman must agree with the scripture. The sister must understand fully he is my Lord. Whatever he, whatever say, whatever he says goes. You understand? He's got the final word. No matter what happens, he's got the final, final word. But in Babylon the Great, the sisters have been taught to have the final word. That's out of order according to the scriptures. And that's why we have to set this thing correctly. Okay? Go back to Sarah 25 and 1. The book of Ecclesiasticus, so 25 verse 1. Read. In three things, I was beautified and stood up beautiful, both before God and men. Mm -hmm. The unity of brethren. Read. The love of neighbors. Mm -hmm. A man and a wife that agree together. The love of neighbors, a man and a wife that agree together. So what you want to see here is, in order for the wife, the man and the wife to agree together, guess what needs to happen? Everybody must submit them as what? They must be in their proper role, in their order. That's how you're going to agree together. You understand? That's the only way you're going to agree. You will not agree together if you don't agree. You don't agree with 1 Corinthians 11 verse 3. That's not going to happen. You will not be able to do it. You won't be able to do it. But to agree together, that means you must know your role and stay in your role. You must know your lane and stay in your lane. Okay? That's how you're going to have a successful marriage. Now watch this. Give me... Mm, let me see if I want to go there. Yeah, give me that in First Corinthians 1. First Corinthians chapter 1. There we go. First Corinthians 1 and 10. I don't know what the hell I was writing. Okay, First Corinthians 1 verse 10. Read that. First book of Corinthians chapter 1 verse 10. Really? Now I beseech you, brethren, by the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, mm -hmm. that you all speak the same thing. Really? And that there be no divisions among you, mm -hmm. but that ye be perfectly joined together in the same mind and in the, in the same judgment. So now, this is one of the ways to make sure that a man and the wife agree together. They both speak the same thing. With the men in the lead. Why? Give me that in Sirach 726. This is how you're going to be able to speak the same things. This is what it means. Remember it says, A man shall leave his father and his mother and shall cleave to his wife and they twain shall be one flesh. So for you to agree together, you must speak the same thing that there be no divisions among you. But in what order? The, the proper order is what we read in Ezekiel and what we read in the book of... Um, in the book of Proverbs, chapter 8, verse 4. Now, 1 Corinthians 11, verse 3. Watch this now. Sirach 7, 26. The book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 7, verse 26. Has thou a wife after thy mind? Forsake her not. Forsake her not. He says, do you have a wife after your mind? So, in order for there to be peace on peace in the house, to be order in the house, godly order in the house, Guess what? The wife's mind must be after the husband's mind. Meaning you must all speak the same thing. Your mind, you must tailor your mind according to his mind 100%.
You have no opinion. You can't say, I want to be myself. That's not in the Bible. Because when Eve was created, she was taken out of the rib of Adam. She was created out of Adam's rib and she was brought to Adam. Guess what? She didn't say, no, I want to be myself until later on when she, she, gave, ear to the, she gave ear to the devil. But the point is, there was no such thing as I want to be my man. I want to be myself and, one, and I want to be by myself. You didn't read about that in Genesis, the second chapter. A lot of the times where you see there's problems in the marriage is because the wife does not want to submit herself to the black man, to her Lord. She still thinks, no, I also have an opinion. I also have my own thoughts. Okay. I also, I also want to, I want to, I want my thoughts to be acknowledged. No. Our thoughts don't get acknowledged by the Lord. The Lord don't give a damn about what we think. He's telling us what we may commanding us. I want you to do this, you men. And guess what? Our job is to make sure that the women, they fall in the same line. Their mind must be 100% according to our mind. Not some of it, not no, I want to be myself. No, no. You, you from, because you, from your, from your father's house, are you yourself? What are you talking about? Because everything you do is what the father, the, everything, everything that happens in the house is because of your father. Your father is the one that says the house, and the house in order. The woman follows and makes sure that the children understands that. So when you move from your father's house to your husband's house, it's the same thing. You have no opinion. You don't, you no, can't say, no, I want to be my, my, I want to be myself. The only way for you to be yourself, your mind must be according to my mind because my mind is according to God's mind. That's the order. I know some of you sisters are preaching on the inside. You're going to be all right. Don't worry about this thing. You're going to be fine. The Lord is with you. Watch this. Give me. Hmm. Let me see if I want to touch on that. Um, uh, read verse 26 again. Sarah 7, 26. The book of Ecclesiasticus, chapter 7, verse 26. Has thy wife after thy mind? Forsake her not, but give not thyself over to a light woman. Don't give yourself over to a light woman. Remember, we're talking about one flesh. For you to be one flesh, one spirit, one mind, one judgment, guess what? You, what, what? What your husband says or what your father says, that's exact, That's law. That's it. There's no if or maybe. No, that's what it is. That's how we're going to set the nation in order. You understand? To make sure that everybody understands they are the role that the Lord has set for them. And you must fulfill that role to the, to the fullest extent of your how capable you are in the spirit of Christ, you must do that thing. Okay, both men and women. Because we are doing this because we want to get the kingdom. Okay, that's why we are doing this thing. Now watch this. Give me the book. So this is what you, this is what it means to make sure that um, as as especially the sisters. Because I know the sisters is, sisters is very difficult for them. Why? Because in Babylon, they've been taught that they've got rights. They are independent. Okay? They are smart. They've got degrees. They've got PhDs and so forth. So they don't have to listen to nothing you say, but we come with the word of God. This is our, this is our graduate program right here. Okay? Watch this. Um, give me... You know what? I want to backtrack a little bit. Something I want to touch on. Give me the book of Tobit, chapter 3. Give me Tobit, chapter 3, verse 14. I just want to deal with this thing, okay? Uh, before you give me Tobit 3, give me 2 Corinthians 5, 17 first. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 17. Watch this. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 17. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. All things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. 
So now, if you are in Christ, you, you, are, you, are, you are a new creature. Now that you are born again, you are a new creature, new creation. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. Now that you are in the truth, okay, you've, you've dealt in the past and all of that. Now you are in the truth now. I'm talking to the sisters now. Your job is to maintain being in the truth to keep yourself cleansed from what? From the filth that you was in in the world. Now that you're in here, these are the solutions now. Watch this. If any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. Give me that in Philippians chapter 3, verse 13. The book of Philippians, chapter 3, verse 13. Read. Brethren, I count not myself to have apprehended, but there's one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind. Doing what? Forth, forgetting those things which are behind. That's the law right there. It says you must forget those things that are behind. Forgetting those things which are behind. Read. And reaching forth unto those things which are before. Which are before, meaning the new life that Christ has promised you with his blood. You understand? So you are a new creature. All things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. Now you are a new creature in Christ now. You understand? So because I'm dealing specifically with the sisters, those that are no, not virgins anymore in terms of what? They have dealt with the men before. Okay? This is how you must look at it now. Now that, um, you know, you are no longer a virgin like that. So this is how you must look at things now with a new mindset, a born again mindset. Toby chapter 3 verse 14. Read that. This is our foremother, Sarah, Tobias' wife. Okay, read that. The book of Tobit, chapter 3, verse 14. Mm -hmm. Thou knowest, Lord, that I am pure from all sin with man. You see what she says? He says, thou knowest, Lord, that I am pure from all sin with men. Because guess what? She's never dealt with a man like that. So now she's saying, I'm pure from all sin with men. So that's how you sisters must look at it now. Yes, you are defiled, you are abused and all of that. Okay, now it's time for you to what? You are a new creature in Christ now. All things are passed away. All, thing, all things are become new. This is how you must think now going forward. Read. And that I never polluted my name, no, the name of my father in the land of my captivity. Because right now, where are we? We are in the lands of our captivities right now. He says, and that I never polluted my name, nor the name of my father in the land of our captivity, of my captivity. We're in captivity right now. So your job is to make sure that you're, you don't pollute your name anymore like you did in the past. This is, to, I'm talking about specifically to the sisters. Nor the name of your father as you did in the past. You understand? Bringing shame to your father's house, right? I am the only daughter of my father. Mm -hmm. Neither had he any child to be his heir. Neither any, neither any near kinsman, nor any son of his alive. Ray? To whom I may keep myself for a wife. You see that thing? To whom I may keep myself for a wife. That is the objective. You understand? It says, and I never polluted my name. No. Verse 14. It says, thou knowest, thou knowest, Lord, that I am pure from all sin with men. Read verse 14 again. Read it for me. The book of Tobit, chapter 3, verse 14. Mm -hmm. Thou knowest, Lord, that I am pure from all sin with men. Read. And that I never polluted my name, nor the name of my father in the land of my captivity. Now jump down to the point where it says, to whom I may keep myself. To whom I may keep myself for a wife. To whom I may keep myself for a wife. So that is the job now. Your job is to what? Is to prepare yourself for a wife. Not a girlfriend. Not somebody's baby mama. Not somebody's one night stand. No. A wife. You must prepare yourself to be a wife. That is what we're reading here. So you have to be focused in other words. You must stay focused and understand the mission. 
what this is about. If you are going to become one flesh with, the, with this man, you must make sure that you have all your checks and balances because he's the price. You understand? But your job is to make sure that you're not getting a bum which presents himself as a price, but he's a bum. So in order for you to make sure that he's not a bum, you must go through the checklist. The brothers too. Your job is to make sure that you're not dealing with a dragon Jezebel sister. Your job is to make sure that all of these things that we went over, you understand? Defiling herself under her father's house and all of that. You understand? You understand? abusing herself with over much liberty and things of that nature. You understand? To make sure that he did not have a child under her father's roof. Okay? From her father's house, she, did she go straight to her husband's house? No. Those are things that you need, to, you need to examine. Is she coming from a good family and so forth? How is the mother like? Is the mother a sloth? Is the mother lazy? Is the mother disrespectful? Because if she is, Guess what? Ezekiel 16.44. Read that. The book of Ezekiel, chapter 16, verse 44. Read. Behold, everyone that useth proverbs shall use this proverbs against thee, saying... Shall you read? Shall what? Shall use this proverb against thee, saying... Okay, come on. As is the mother... So is her daughter. As is the mother, so is her daughter. So if the mother is a whore, she's, she's got a whorish mindset. Because how do we know if she's got a whorish mindset? Because lately now I'm seeing it more and more. Abu Koko be wearing leggings. Abu Koko be wearing jeans, tight fitting jeans. Abu Koko. You understand? So that's the example that she's seeing. That's the example that she's growing out of. That means when she comes into the truth, you must stay away from the sister. The sister must build herself up according to the scriptures and get her mind right. You understand? So she doesn't have that whorish mindset. Make sure that she's not dis she make sure that you see how her mother is because you're going to be able to see how she's going to be. If she 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 be speaking loud, you understand? She's all up in the man's face. She's argumentative and all of that then you know what you're going to get from the daughter because the scriptures cannot be broken. As is the mother, so is a daughter. The, the scriptures telling you the mother is the mother a, a dragon, the daughter going to be a dragon as well. Though that means she's not ready for marriage. You understand? As an example, these are some of those telltale signs you can use, okay? To make sure that you are not going to go um, and marry a dragon, a Jezebel dragon. You know, imagine she's Jezebel and she's a dragon. What type of dragon is this? Now, watch this. Um, now, give me Romans chapter 7, verse 14. Romans 7, verse 14. Hey, my battery is going to mm -hmm. die soon. Mm -hmm. Read that. Romans 7, verse 14, real quick. The book of Romans, chapter 7, verse 14. Read. For we know that the law is spiritual, mm -hmm. but I am carnal, soul, and the sin. He says, for we know that the law is spiritual. The laws of God is spiritual. Okay? So when he says that they twain shall be one flesh, you're going to be one flesh in spirit. That's what we was going over. You understand that you must speak the same things. You understand? Your mind must be after his mind. That you, that's what that goes that's spiritually physically as well that's why it's important that the sister cleans herself with the word of God when she comes into the truth the brother also he cleanses himself with the word of God when he comes into this truth before he can even think of marriage so that when they, the two of you come together sexually her demons don't transfer to you and your demons to her because that's what's going to happen that's what's going to happen. There's no if or maybe about it. First Corinthians chapter 6, verse 15. Read that. First book of Corinthians, chapter 6, verses 15. Read. Know ye not that your bodies 
are the members of Christ? Shall I then take the members of Christ and make them the members of an harlot? God forbid. Read. What? Know ye not that he which is joined to an harlot is one body? Come on. Or two, say he, shall be one flesh. You see what he's saying? It says, do you not know that the that which is joined to an harlot is one body? For two, meaning you and the harlot, saith he, said the Lord, shall be one flesh. So, because the word sex means sensual energy exchange. Sensual energy exchange. That's what sex is. S-E-X, that's an, is, is actually an acronym. Okay? So, sensual energy exchange. Meaning what? The exchange of energies. That's exactly what happens. So if the sister has a demon, you deal with her. She's been, she's got many bodies on her, on her belt. All the demons that were in all those men that she dealt with, they are all going to, they are all in her and they are all going to jump on you and vice versa. That's why it's important for brothers and sisters, take your time, be patient, get your mind right, get rid of those demons so you can be what? So you can, when you're going to prove and eventually get married, the sister's right, you are right. In the spirit, of course. That's how you're going to agree as one. Your spirit is going to agree and your bodies are going to agree as well. So it's both be physical and spiritual too. You understand? Matthew 19 verse 5 again. The book of Matthew chapter 19 verses 5. Mm -hmm. And said, for this cause shall a man leave father and mother and shall cleave to his wife and, and they shall cleave to his wife. He shall cleave to his wife. Go ahead. And shall cleave to his wife. And they twain shall be one flesh. And they twain shall be one flesh. <clears throat> Excuse me. So what, what, what Christ is teaching us here is the foundation. He went back to the foundation of Genesis. You understand? The marriage for uh, uh, the, the, the foundation for a strong nation is a strong marriage. A strong, healthy marriage according to the scriptures. We know there's going to be troubles in the marriage. That's why it says they, they, they shall be trouble in the flesh. But guess what? As long as you both believe in the scriptures, you believe on Christ, you believe on applying the commandments of the Most High, seek counsel, you're going to be all right. Okay? Now, go back to Sarah 25 and 1 now. The book of Ecclesiastes 25 verse 1. In three things I was beautified and stood up beautiful, both before God and men. The unity of brethren, the love of neighbors, a man and a wife that agree together. A man and a wife that agree together. That's a beautiful thing in the sight of God. That is a beautiful thing. Okay? So, I'm going to end the class right here. Okay? I don't want to go any further. Got a couple of precepts here that I needed to pull, but I don't have enough time okay so but it's all right i'll bang it for the next time let's break bread okay in the honor of our lord and savior jesus christ for laying his life down for us that we also may have life for i have received of the lord that which also i delivered unto you that the lord jesus the same night in which he was betrayed to bread and when he had given thanks he break it and said Take, eat, this is my body, which is broken for you. This do in remembrance of me. After the same manner also he took the cup, and when he had supped, say, This cup is the New Testament in my blood. This do ye, as often as ye drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as ye eat this bread and drink this cup, ye do show the Lord's death till he come. Wherefore, whosoever shall eat this bread and drink this cup of the Lord unworthily, shall be guilty of the body and the blood of the Lord. But let a man examine himself, and so let him eat of that bread and drink of that cup. For he that eateth and drinketh unworthily, eateth and drinketh damnation to himself, not discerning the Lord's body. For this cause many are weak and sickly among you, and many sleep. In the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. Let's give the most high hand for that. Let's give the most high hand.